guys, welcome back to another video. Man, today's gonna be a great day. Although it's kind of overcast and not all that nice outside, we're not gonna let the weather dictate how accomplishing this video really feels to make. We've been hard at work over the last number six uploads working on the Kelderman installation with the black F-250 power stroke. Finally today, we're gonna be able to just lock down a few miscellaneous small little items, which some of them we got done there at the beginning of the video. We'll be able to actually take that thing out on the road for the first time. It feels like a huge weight's been lifted because as much as I love having a project in the pipeline, Line. I really don't like seeing them take too long. We ran up against a lot of challenges in this specific installation because it was a rather complex install. It's not like your little traditional leveling kit that you just throw on in a few hours. Rather, this was a complete transformation of the entire suspension geometry on an Aluma Duty. We learned a lot. It was a really great process. And that first drive is going to be even more fulfilling and satisfying knowing that all the work was done by us with these hands right here. So before we head to the shop, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that chose to get entered for Dream Diesel giveaway number 13. The entries for this truck and the associated $10,000 cash and the additional five prizes that were run during week three of the campaign are all now safe and sound in the hands of our sweepstakes administrator, Compliance Sweepstake Services. And we should be hearing back from them in the beginning of November with six names. Dad life, boys? Gonna be picking Little Jack up later today and I'm so excited to see him. Man, my parents out in the audience, I know you guys can relate to the fact that when you're with your son or your daughter, all you can do is think about them and then when you're not with them, it's the exact same feeling. It's absolutely crazy. Your world changes so much when you become a parent. It's usually one of the best changes that's ever happened to me other than getting married to my wife, who's honestly my best friend, because it's genuinely made me a better person overall. It is a challenge, but I think all these challenges really kind of play into your overall character, and character is one of those things that constantly needs practice and maintenance. Anyway, side note, guys, we gotta do some stuff to the Denali soon. Spoiler alert, I may or may not have got some new wheels that are on the way for this thing as we speak and I am thinking that this thing kind of needs to go under the knife soon. Now guys before we jump into the shop and break the Ford out I wanted to let you guys know that Doors Off Giveaway is doing its second Jeep giveaways. So this JKU and $10,000 cash aren't for grabs. Just like our truck giveaways is extremely short. It ends November 19th. Now I know most of you if not all of you are 100% about the diesel thing but just remember you decide to get entered to win this Jeep right here and you're drawn as the winner not only do you get a prize that's worth money but you also get money that's worth money. Aww. And if you want to sell the Jeep, get into a diesel truck, that's an option. So I'm just saying a very minor investment could lead to a lot of options. Why do I have all my truck keys on me, right? I literally have keys on me that I don't even have the trucks for. Hey, Jake, here you go. There's more. Ha ha, here we go. You like that right there? I actually really do like that. I love how you have this on it because you're a moron and can't find anything that you have. Wait, you'll click the button on that thing. There's a button. Is it working? Ah, uh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Exhibit A. God, I hate when stools step in front of me. <laughs> Look at the lights, boys! Hell yeah, dude! Did you connect them? Nah, you definitely didn't connect them. It would be nice if you connected the brake light. The moment of truth. Okay. <laughs> Yo, oh my god, this guy. All right, a few more. This close. It's really tough up here, you know, with the heated seat on and everything. Probably like two more twists. Oh my God, having the Ford out of the shop is easily one of the most satisfying feelings that I've felt this entire month. It just felt like it dragged on too much. I'm probably being a little bit overdramatic because I would say that seeing a truck transform to this extent in three weeks is far quicker than that of kind of the average turnaround time of what we enjoy of the build process. Guys, here we are and it's on the road. Now I was so excited to share this with people that I know would absolutely appreciate it. So I stopped by at Lime Ridge and showed them they're stoked about it. And now we get to have 
have a little bit of a discussion about this Kelderman lift. First things first, to have trained and experienced technicians install this lift kit at Kelderman under their roof, it quote 35 hours. All said and done between Jake and I and all of us, we have probably about 50 in it. I would say a few of those are solely attributed to the fact that we didn't have tools. And I don't wanna say that because it actually wasn't that intimidating of an install, rather it just required some specialty tools that we didn't have. Legitimately one entire morning for about three hours, we spent trying to find a very specific reverse Torx socket that Ford uses on their bed bolts. Legitimately took so long to get that. We found it, we got it off, it happened. So all said and done, 50 hours into transforming a truck from its factory suspension configuration to air ride. 50 hours well spent if you ask me. You guys are extremely familiar with the lift at this point in time. And if you're new to the channel, you can go back to some of our previous videos to learn a little bit more about the suspension that we have on this truck. To summarize, it's the Kelderman five to six inch air ride conversion, airbags where the stock springs are in the front, and we converted the rear suspension from the factory leaf spring to a four link radius arm airbag setup that now has a sway bar and a track bar bracket with a track bar right there in between each frame rail. It was very much a conversion. Also guys, if you hear my voice starting to lose its tone, it's cause something's going on. I think I got a little bit of a cold. And if I lose my voice by the end of this video, well, here's my reminder that you guys should tap that subscribe button, notification bell, and the thumbs up while you're around. So as you can see, we've got what is a very dramatic factory rake on this truck right now. From the factory, trucks have a little bit more height in the rear than in the front because they're accounting for weight that will inevitably be payload, which will push the bottom of the truck down. I decided to kind of exacerbate that a little bit by raising the truck probably about two more inches higher than the front right now. And as you can see, it's got ourselves a nice little rake going on. So the part that we haven't really talked all that much about is how you control the system. It's from this little remote right here. So now the one thing that we have not done is calibrated our system, meaning that there are self-leveling arms in the front and rear that when calibrated will keep you at the exact same ride height, no matter what. The reason that this isn't calibrated yet is because we have not synced this up yet. Genuinely because I really wanted to make this video and I really didn't want the truck to be tied up in the shop any longer. Rather, I just wanted to get some seat time. This system's by Airlift Performance and they basically control the compressor and the compressor manifold that allows us to individually control each bag. Now you can see we've got four tiles here. Each one represents its respective corner of the truck. Front left, front right, rear left, rear right. And then we've got a series of buttons here. One, two, three, four buttons on either side. These programmable buttons here. Simply by tapping this button, we can raise up the truck. We just inflated the bags from 60 pounds on average to 100 pounds, and we just raised the entire front end of the truck just like that. Now you can see it's actually got a little bit of Pennsylvania squat instead of a little pen of Pennsylvania rake. These are the self-leveling arms that we're talking about. You can see we have the front ones hooked up. They are calibrated. It's just that we haven't done the rear ones quite yet. That is a hop up there. And if you come back to this, you can actually hit the down button right here. Now we're letting air out of the system. That jump is way smaller now. Now you guys can see that we are back to our super rake state and you can't see that airbag up underneath at all now. Some other really cool features about this is these four buttons right here are programmable. If we wanna add air to the entire system, you can actually just hit this top button and it will inflate all the bags simultaneously rather than having to individually control them. If you want, you can individually control their up or their down. There's a risen button right here and then there's a depressed button right here respective to what it is you want it to command. Kind of a nice little feature for interaction. Now these buttons are basically preset. So what we can do is come up with some scenarios. Scenario number one, for instance, is your everyday drive height. Here, I think we're gonna set this thing right about five inches. A lot of it is going to be dependent upon the wheel and tire setup that we put on this, which as you guys know, are 24 by 14 specialty forged that are gonna be wrapped in that freaking wickedly bad Toyo 375. If you guys are excited about that news, smash that thumbs up button. The second scenario can be light towing. So let's just say we hook up to the gooseneck, which we will be doing in future uploads. That thing weighs roughly 4,000 pounds. So in theory, it might squat the truck some at its normal drive height PSI. So we can have that adjusted here. And then scenario number three would be heavy towing, for instance. If you don't want to program it that way, we can leave that up to the self leveling arms. What will happen is when we back up to a trailer that has a payload on it, let's just say the skid steer, for instance, 10,000 pound skid steer. These arms will move as the geometry of the compression goes down and that will command the compressor to raise it back up just by moving that little actuator arm. I think what I'm gonna do with these buttons is I'm gonna program a drive height all the way down and all the way up. Inevitably, who wouldn't wanna air all the way down or go all the way up? I don't know if you guys noticed, but we actually have the rock lights hooked up to auxiliary one switch, which is really sweet. Easily one of my favorite characteristics for the aftermarket guys like us because you can run six different electronic components 
units off of already integrated switches. And the beautiful part of having integrated switches is you have integrated hookups. So we literally just pulled the wiring harness right out from the firewall, connected this to hot and to ground, and then we had a switch. Pretty nice. All right, guys. So now we're going to take this thing out for its first inaugural test drive around town to see how it does. And then hopefully we can get it out on the highway as well, just to see how it feels. Right now we are riding at the height at which we will set this truck up at for driving purpose. So what'll happen is we'll hit the button on the controller. It will get us to the desired PSI in each bag, front and rear, which will get us to our requested ride height. And then that will be where we're set up for our steering wheel to stay straight, for everything to be straight up front, and for all of the geometries, the bags, and everything to work in sync. Kelderman makes a suite of different lift kits. So if you wanted your driving ride height to be higher, you would just go with a bag setup that was a little bit larger to get you there. Right now, we're probably at about five and a half inches of lift. Sitting here on these 37s makes us feel way taller than everybody else. It is way, way smoother. You don't feel like you're being thrown around as much as you did with the coil springs up front. It's a really weird thing to say this, but it feels like we're riding on a cloud. When you accelerate, it doesn't feel like the bags are squatting in the rear. And on the contrary, when you get on the brakes, it doesn't feel like this thing is mashing its nose forward. I can confidently say that this is the absolute best riding solid axle front and rear truck that I've ever been in ever. I had the exact same reaction if you guys can't recall when we took Andy Robbie's 1000 horsepower 5th gen Cummins out when we were at Fire Pump. That thing rode so ridiculously smooth and I was honestly having a hard time wrapping my mind around it. I assumed that was going to be the case working with a company like Kelderman, but I can take this moment right now to confirm that it is in fact like a cloud. It's not all over the place. It doesn't feel loose. It doesn't feel like I'm not in control by any means. Ooh, we got ourselves a lifted brother. And look at that freaking drop hitch on that Cummins Mega Cab. That's a nice truck. But the question is, though, can he do this? <laughs> All right, guys, first impressions here, completely raw. I mean, we're moving, we're cruising, we're passing big rigs and we're sitting at eye level with them. But I would say that the softness and the overall ride quality improved in a night and day difference. It's it's that dramatic. Whoa, yes. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> this could be potentially problematic. Right, let's see the escape. Oh my God, it's growing legs. What the? You ever seen a man hatch out of a tire before? I'm quickly feeling my vocal cords screaming more and more and more for mercy because I continue to shout at this camera that is all of you guys. We got a lot of stuff to clean up in here. That's what I'm gonna start working on, but I am not gonna drag you guys along in this process. My OCD is absolutely screaming right now because we basically can't do anything with the 1600 square foot shop that we have because it's just occupying a whole bunch of crap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it all loaded up in the back of the truck. I'm going to dispose of it properly as well as some other miscellaneous crap that we've kind of gathered there on the side. I've got a really big shop change announcement that I'm gonna be making soon. I can't really reveal any of the details quite yet, but it may or may not involve some changes. I wish I could tell you guys more because it's extremely exciting, but unfortunately, great things take time and I really don't ever like to speak before I can confirm that something in fact is actually going to happen. More to come on that in future uploads. I couldn't be any more excited about getting those 375s on that truck right there. Not only because the Pizza Cutter 37s, I mean, they're doing their job, I can respect that look. I like that look a lot, especially going into the winter months, as I have a set of 35s on my Denali wheels that I'm considering running, but I probably won't, only because the new wheels that I have coming in for the Denali are like really, really sick. I was considering running those, but I've since kind of changed my mind just because there's something about a set of aftermarket wheels, but also because I've yearned to run these Toyos in one of my trucks since they came out. I'm very excited about it to say the least. I'm trying to be patient, I'm doing my best. Man, look at that. We got some of our square footage back. Guys, it feels fantastic. It's almost like we just walked into an actually presentable shop. Now, I know you guys aren't judging me too much. When we get to work, we kind of make a mess as I think a mess is a direct byproduct of something absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy to see that truck out of the shop. It's ready to go and it's honestly just begging to be driven. Now, in my specific instance, I'm going to pull it in because the Denali actually actually has little Jack's car seat in it. And that's where we are headed right now. All the 28 years that I've walked this planet, my management really hasn't been one of my strongest suits. But in this instance, when I need to be somewhere by a specific time to get my son, kind of leaves you no other option than to just dive right in and get good at it. If anything, I'm learning how to be a little bit more effective in my planning. And I'm beginning to practice something that could be challenging and that's living in the now, being aware of what's to come and looking back and appreciating the past. I 
Hey. You still snoozing? Oh, hey, bud. Hey, Welcome back to the vlog. How did Ozzy just get in there? Ozzy. He is literally just a savage. Hey. Ozzy. What's up, buddy? Welcome back to the vlog, hey, dude. Sweet. All right, guys. Welcome back to the homestead. We got a few minor updates about all the landscape projects that we had going on here a few weeks back. First update for you guys is we actually have some grass sprouting in the areas that we leveled. If you can't recall, we graded all of this dirt out. We spread a whole bunch of hay, put grassy down, put fertilizer down, and we are starting to sprout. It's hard to see them, but they're there. I am super excited about that. If I'm like any of you other homeowners out there, I absolutely love cutting my grass. That big dog 60 inch has been a fantastic addition to the homestead fleet. And it's something I really look forward to. So big stripes coming out front come springtime 2020. Driveway has been great. Allows us to stash our vehicles. We got Dream Diesel Giveaway 13 and 8 ball. 1800 total combined horsepower right there, but potential across 2000 with the setup on Dream Diesel Giveaway number 13. Some big changes that we've seen in the back yard this all used to be overgrown brush like that so we went to town with the brush hog and about an hour and a half later we had ground and then what we're going to do is once the grounds are somewhat prepped we're actually going to move our goat pen livestock pen from where it is there back here so we can make room for future shop and so we have a nice little dedicated area for our livestock so once everything's gated and fenced off back here we'll probably be picking up four goats either pygmy or fainting goats one of the two they're a smaller breed of goat as well as probably half a dozen chicken that way we can harvest our own eggs fresh every single morning. Freaking stoked that you guys have been loving all the stuff that we've been doing around here. And kind of slacking with that lately, but we will be picking up back with the home projects here very, very soon, I promise. Oh yeah, another thing is I am gonna put a tree stand out there because no joke, every single time I'm back in the woods hunting, right around kind of the food plot area, there are deer that are up here that my wife's texting me pictures of from our family room. Anyway guys, that's where we're gonna wrap up this video. Gonna head inside, spend some time with the fam. But back to my fam right here. Smash the thumbs up, like button, and notification bell on your way out and we'll see y'all in the next upload.